my friends, Soul Tribe reading, Soul Tribe reading. <laughs> so right away, I want to tell you about something really funny that happened to me last night. And I came into my room and there was a card in the middle of my room on the floor and it was a deck that was put away. It was the deck that was put away in its place, not this deck, but it was put away like this. So it had its book on top. I hadn't used it since last week. There is no logical reason why there was a card in, on my floor from this deck. I used this deck last week for you guys and then I put it away when I was cleaning. There's no logical reason why this card should have been on in the middle of my floor, but I walked into my room after doing my readings, went downstairs, came back up, and this card was in the middle of my floor. And I knew it was a sign, but even after this whole thing happened, I was like, Spirit, can you just send me a signier sign? Um, it occurred to me that I had asked the universe for a sign the night before, like the night before yesterday. Anyway, so weird. So I walked into my room and I walk over. There's a card on the, this card is on the floor face up and I pick it up. And as I picked it up, I started having a hot flash and I'm not talking about menopause. I'm talking, I sent a photo to my friend. I looked like I was on fire and it made me think of karmic cycles, karmic justice. Anyway, this card that was in the middle of my floor says justice is coming. And the minute that I picked it up, I felt like I was on fire. Anyway, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know what that means for me. I don't, I don't, I'm sharing this with you because you guys are my best friends and, you know, you believe in magic. You know, I showed this to my partner and he was just kind of like, oh, that's strange. Um, but it's not strange. It was meant to be and it's magical. Um... To me, it's the energy of someone, like something coming out of the closet. And I don't mean in that sense. I'm hearing skeletons in the closet. Um, so I'm not sure what this means for me. If someone's going to be, you know, I could almost see this being my mother trying to reach out to me. You know, it's interesting. Before I was awakened, I used to feel my mother's energy. I used to start thinking about her and then she would reach out to me. So... That could be a thing here. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because the minute I picked it up, I had a physical reaction. And if you're someone on this awakening journey, maybe you've noticed that your body actually talks to you. Um, I saw, like, it must have been last year when I was looking into this, but <clears throat> I remember coming across someone who was talking about how you can, you can ask your guides to give you physical sensations based on what you should do. So, you know, similar to how I've shown you with a pendulum. So with a pendulum, you say you hold the pendulum over your hand, center your energy, and you say to your guides, show me a yes, and it'll either go back and forth or, or it'll go in a circle. And then you say, show me a no, and it'll do the opposite so that you know what means yes and what means no. You can actually do this with your body, with bodily sensations. So you can say to your guides, you need to be like in a meditative state. Um, does it work the first time? Not for everybody. But you can actually learn how to like say to your guides, show me the physical sensation of a yes or show me the physical. And that's how some people choose their piles with pick a cards. They look at each pile. That's how I do it. And they wait for that physical sensation that means that that's their pile. Anyway, I'm like spitting a little because of my stupid thing, but it's not stupid. It's aligning me, <laughs> my retainer, but I did spit on myself a little. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. And immediately after that happened, it was like, but could I get a sign that's a little bit more obvious? Like how much more obvious do you want to get? Like, that's what my guide said to me. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, <laughs> I could just feel my frustration, my guide's frustrations with me. Like, is she kidding? She's asking for a signier sign than that card being in the middle of her floor with no logical reason for it being there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to show that to you. And maybe, you know, that's symbolic because we're aligned. Um, we're aligned for a reason. So maybe that's symbolic that justice is coming for you. Also, I'm wearing 
my Ghostbusters shirt. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm wearing my Ghostbusters shirt. <laughs> and for some reason, I haven't worn it in a very long time, like two or three years, maybe because I didn't fit into it. Now I do. Um, <laughs> but the first thing I heard was it's like, who are you going to call? And the first thing, like I specifically heard this for my soul tribe reading you know, when you get into trouble or when you need encouragement or when you need um, like a pep talk, who are you going to call? Yourself. If you said yourself, high five. You're already on the right track. Um, for some reason, I just felt the need to say that. Who are you going to call? Yourself. You know? Anyway, I don't even know why that's coming out, but my guides told me to say that. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. I have a few decks that I want to get. Um, I have a new deck that I got today and I want to use it with you. Um, I'll get it at the end. Interesting. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to take that card. Interesting. That wasn't the card. How did that get there? I just did a reading with this and that wasn't on the bottom before. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to read this to you right now. I'm going to wait to the end to get these for you though. Dragonfly, adaptability. The dragonfly is a symbol of light and change. It is a reminder. It is reminding you to bring a little more lightness and joy into your life in order to bring about the changes you need to reach your, your full potential. Approach things lightly. So don't be overly serious or too hard on yourself or set your expectations too high for yourself. I always tell people myself included, set small goals, set, set goals that you can accomplish so that you can feel really good when you accomplish them. If you sit down and write a list of goals that are, you know, really hard to accomplish for you right now, it could, you know, kind of dim your hope a little when you're not checking those things off your list. So make sure your goals are attainable as well. I'm being called to talk about this thing that I saw about manifestation, which is you it's like um you make like a circle and in the circle you write what you want to manifest and then outside of the circle you write the things that you already have that can help you towards that manifestation if that makes sense instead of you know I don't know what example to use but like let's say you put in the middle I want to be a rock star and then the on the outside of the circle, that's where you put the things that you already have within you that can help you go towards that goal, if that makes sense. It makes that goal and that manifestation feel more attainable when you can back it up with energy and things you already have to put towards it. Does that make sense? Anyway, hopefully that made sense. But I know I've used this deck with you guys before. But for some reason, my guides told me to get this deck. So this is my favorite Oracle deck, I think. So we'll see what comes out for you. Um, we've got Blessed on the bottom right away, 22. Which you know I'm going to look at. Something wonderful is about to happen to you, apparently. Um, I'm actually being called, hang on. Interesting. So I'm just going to read the oracle message for you. There are moments in life when out of the blue, it seems like everything has been orchestrated by divine intervention. You feel blessed in ways that are difficult to express. It's as if the Red Sea parts in front of you and events come together to banish your troubles easily and naturally. Very interesting. So this could be what's coming towards you. It could feel like things are about to... What's really interesting is we have TikTok here. So it feels like something you've been waiting for, something that you've been trusting in. It's like the seas are about to part and you're about to have this gift from the universe, maybe a manifestation. Take it as it resonates. But yeah, let's see what else comes out. Let's see what else comes out. We have two cards coming out for you right away. Oh my goodness. Remember how I said that justice card? I felt like I was getting the energy of skeletons in the closet and someone, you know, 
wanting someone wanting to bring justice to a situation or mend something. Very interesting what we have coming out. And this is the last card in this deck, which I find magical when that happens. It's like, to me, that's the energy where you're hitting completion when you're about to complete a cycle. Um, when you get the last card in the deck, again, it's like it's like getting the world card to me. Um, right away, I'm hearing that this person may not be as evolved as you or as healed as you because we see this person sitting on a shorter little stump there kind of looking up, wanting to mend this. It's also 52 um, chariot energy. So something, something moving ahead here. Let's see the other one. We have chaos and conflict 33. And what's interesting about this card is we see that creature who is part zebra part giraffe and the zebra represents duality and balance and then the giraffe represents um, seeing things from a higher perspective seeing the bigger picture um, being able to look back and see why that chaos happened why that conflict happened that it was creating um, stability in its own way I'm hearing I'm hearing that's really interesting. I need to go. I need I need to go for a second. Hang on. So when I was looking at that card, I was actually hearing healing chaos, which is a card in a different deck. Um, not by the same person either. Healing chaos. Um, and it talks about a spiraling tornado. I'm just I'm going to read that. I'm being told to read this to you. When you receive this card or when, you know, Kelly intu intuitively feels like you need this message, <laughs> it acknowledges potential chaos or the need for chaos as an activator for profound healing. If your life seems chaotic, know that it has an underlying energy of healing. You are being healed on all levels. You are a healer. Alternatively, if your life is calm to the point of stagnancy, this card suggests that it might be time to create a bit of chaos. It will activate healing, do the unexpected, mix life up a bit. So I do feel like whatever happened here happened for a reason in order to um, balance things out. For some reason, I'm being reminded of this card I have that's about fire and about how fire is like an equalizer. Anyway, don't know why I'm hearing that. So yeah, that's the card we have. Those are the cards we have. Um, mending and chaos and conflict. So let's read them. And I'm going to get you one of these cards because my guides got me to get up off my butt and get it. So you're going to get a card now. <laughs> So let's, let's, I'm being told to read 33 first. Disarray, being at a cr cross purposes with another, the tension of opposites, the value of chaos before order. And remember that blessing card, the calm before, no, not the calm before the storm. Um, it talked about, um, you could be experiencing chaos before the calm or before the whatever it said. I don't even remember. <laughs> Opposing forces come together to create a turbulent atmosphere, but consider the value of chaos that serves you well as you become unmoored by it. Scattered to the winds, you leave behind the parts of yourself that you no longer need and disperse seeds to reinvent yourself anew. Although the conflict appears to exist externally, its essence is also internal, projected outward and causing disarray. You may find yourself at a cross, purpose, cross purposes with someone else. I'm almost hearing that this is about whoever this is. That's what it feels like. You found yourself at a crossroads with someone. Doesn't have to be a lover. It could be a family member, a friend, a coworker. I'm even hearing maybe your your like inner voice. Maybe like I'm seeing that. Smeagol and Gollum showdown where poor Smeagol is yelling at Gollum to stop. Um, anyway, 
You may find yourself at a cross purposes with someone else facing a storm you feel you can't control, yet every storm passes and chaos leads to a reordering of things. Conflict provides a way to see more than one side of the situation. Look upon this as just a moment in time when you need to take shelter and step away from the fray. Don't be too eager to fight. This is a time to understand rather than be understood. So you maybe, you know, removed yourself from a chaotic situation. I know we've been talking about that. Now, I'm going to read you the relationship message just in case it resonates. It could be that the person you're connecting to is in a stubborn energy and that this message is actually for them. Stubbornness is keeping you in a state of opposition. The incessant need to be right will only serve to prolong the conflict that deep down you want to be resolved. This is an opportune moment to learn about your values, your sense of self, and what is really important to you. Some things are non-negotiable. If that's true, it's not necessary to fight. Can you find a way through the stormy emotions to higher ground? Soon the air will clear and you will be in a much better place than before. The storm before, for the storm will have passed, blazing a path for new growth in its wake. Things can become electric and enlightened, always better than before. Do you know what song has been stuck in my head for two days? I think it's called Electric Love. Do you guys know the song I mean? That song's been stuck in my head for two days, and I just heard it again when I said electric with this. Um... I'm also going to read the prosperity message since we're here. Circumstances appear to be chaotic, but everything that is happening now is in truth shaking things up so you can find the real path to your prosperity. Yes, it's a stormy time and it feels as if there are opposing forces wherever you turn. Be assured that there is divine purpose in the chaos. Everything that doesn't work is being taken from you so that the truest parts of yourself remain. The events occurring now are essential for your ultimate prosperity. This chaos is divinely inspired, even though it doesn't appear that way now. In time, you will know this to be true. And I think about, you know, looking back, I can see when the universe created tower moments and chaos in my life. And looking at, you know, like my parents, I can see how they had chances throughout I know throughout throughout my upbringing they had chances to take a different path to find healing to better their lives and they just continued to live in that lower vibrational energy and the universe just kept giving them more chaos more chaos more chaos more chaos and my parents are the type of people who say, like, nothing ever goes right for us. We have the worst luck. The universe is against us. Um, and what is happening, I, I don't talk to my parents about this because I haven't spoken to my parents in a while. Um, but I would love to be able to, you know, have a dialogue with them where I could say, maybe that's the universe's way of telling you you're on the wrong path and that you're supposed to be changing. And that, you know the path you're both taking isn't the right one. Um, if you find yourself surrounded by chaos, there's a reason. And I'm not saying that you're someone who's surrounded by chaos and not paying attention. I feel like if you are experiencing this, um, you are taking note, you know? And if you aren't, then this is a message for you that the chaos is there for a reason. It's to cause growth. It's to point you in a new direction. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. And then we have 52. It could be that the person you're connected to is going through tower moment after tower moment after tower moment after tower moment because the universe is trying to give them a more balanced view of this, a different perspective of this. Um, anyway, mending. Forgiveness, making amends, healing after arguments. And remember, I just want to say right, bef right before I get into this, that you don't need to talk to the other person in order to forgive them. Forgiveness comes from within us. Um, a lot of times we won't have that apology. So we need to forgive and make amends within our own energy. Otherwise, it holds us down um, and it leaves us with resentment, if that makes sense. 
All right, let's get into it. Each time we are hurt, we allow the hurt to pass through us. Each time we were hurt, we are hurt and we allow the hurt. I'm just going to hold this nice and close. And we allow the hurt to pass through us without understanding and integration. We accumulate an unwanted burden. This keeps us chained to the very things we need to heal. The pain, the memories, the echo of resentments and the arguments that we rehearse over and over. Now is the time for mending rifts, healing wounds, and letting go of old hurts in order to reclaim your power. Now is the time to forgive, to release, and to make peace, and to make amends with others. Set yourself free. And relationship message, you've come to a place where forgiveness is necessary if you're to move forward. Separate or together, you or the other person are still experiencing the effects of a hurt that is impacting everything you do even if you're not aware of it. The energy needs to clear what must you do to bridge this gap. Closing your heart is not the answer. You have the power to heal this wound. Ask yourself, what would love do? Only good will come of forgiveness and an honest redress. And then we have prosperity message. Everyone makes mistakes, especially when you want something very badly. You may come to realize that in chasing after a pretty shiny thing, you lost sight of a long-term sustainable, you lost term of, lost term, oh my gosh. Let me try that again. You lost sight of long-term sustainable property. There we go. Sometimes you make choices that look good at first, but ultimately lead to loss or failure. It's time to forgive yourself and others. Don't blame anyone else. You get to start again wiser and more mature. The journey to true abundance can be bumpy. Make amends to anyone you may have hurt along the way, especially yourself. Forgive those who may have taken advantage of you. Let go and learn from this. You are now that much closer to achieving the kind of prosperity that really fulfills you. Nothing is ever lost or wasted when you view it from this perspective. Beautiful. Um... Let's get another one from this deck. And then I'm going to get another I'm going to get one from that other deck. Hello Pepper. My dog Pepper's laying outside my door. We have a deep knowing 43. Love you. 43. Love you. Intuition. Listening to the oracle within, empathy, hypersensitivity. Check, check, check. <laughs> um, intuition is the faculty that allows you to enter into a dialogue with source. My ears are ringing. The consciousness that you are a part of but cannot see with the naked eye. It's perplexing that people are taught to ignore this natural capacity to navigate their journeys, to access their inner guidance. Know that you have the ability to read between the lines and see through the veil and find all the truth that was missing when the story was told. This deep knowing allows you to open the door to wisdom far greater than what is available in the limitations of human experience. You've given, you're given information that may make no sense whatever to the logical mind or five senses, but which is 100% correct and true. The trick is to listen and then act accordingly. You're now invited into this sacred dialogue of deep knowing. So tune in and trust your vibes. They will be right. Ask and you will receive answers from unusual sources. Like me. Please, spirit, send me a sign. I just laugh when I was like, but it could be, could it be a clearer sign? <laughs> like how much clearer do you want to get? Um, anyway, and we've been talking about that fear and about trusting that inner voice. It's so easy for us to trust in everything else. You know, I was thinking about it the other day. It's so easy for us to, you know, just a really weird example. It's easy for us to send money to someone that we don't know buying something, trusting that they're going to ship it to us. Like I'm talking about Amazon or anyone, um, you know, we just trust that that's going to come, like that package is going to come. We trust in that. Yet we're so slow to trust our own inner guidance and our own intuition. I do believe what this card says is that people should be 
taught to listen to that voice more, you know? My daughter one day said, um, there's that tickling. <laughs> My daughter one, one day said, you should always, um, you should never go with your gut. And all of my kids looked at her and was like, what are you talking about? You always go with your gut. She was just mistaken. Like she had it backwards. Um, but anyway, you should always go with your gut. <clears throat> your gut instinct is the right one. My book is upside down. <laughs> Seriously, there's a shift happening right now. I can feel it. Um, I felt all week very heavy. I mean, it's only Wednesday. But since that portal, I have felt the energy of... It's almost like a battle between ego and intuition. And it's not my ego and intuition. I feel like as a collective, people are... It's either... It's like sink or swim time. That's what it feels like. It's sink or swim time. You're either going to trust your intuition or you're going to sink into the lower vibrational energy and get swallowed up by your ego. Um, that's what I feel this week. I let go of the need for approval and validation from others. And that's how you know you're growing. When you don't need the validation of others. When you can validate your own journey and experience and existence and all of that. Um... I'm going to read the relationship message. There are occasions when you just know deep in your heart and soul that a person is going to play a meaningful role in your life. Someone crosses your path and then suddenly out of the blue, you're connected at a level impossible to describe. That feeling marks a moment in time etched indelibly into your soul, onto your soul. Someone has entered your life who will be instrumental in your journey, so pay attention. Two hearts are calling to each other to begin an alchemical process. This is also a sign that your intuition about the person you care about is correct. Interesting. Trust your heart to lead you now. Magic is about to happen. And remember your first card was something's about to happen. Abundance is about to happen. You're about to be blessed. And I started this reading off with justice is coming. Why am I showing it to myself? I don't need to see it. <laughs> um, let's read the prosperity message because we've been talking a lot about prosperity and soul path things. So this is a time when your hunches will pay large dividends if you listen to them, take the risk and act. And what have we been saying for like a week? <laughs> Jump off that cliff. Jump. Do it. <laughs> Share your voice. Shine your light. Um, within you there is an or auricular I don't know how to say that consciousness a higher and deeper knowing that transcends the what 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 word is that I'm not even embarrassed to ask you for help M. it's like machine M-A-C-H-I-N-A-T-I-O-N-S. Now, please show me how, show off your smarts, whoever's going to answer this for me. Is that machination, machinations? I don't even know what that word is. I've never seen it. Um, that's, can I just say how a year ago, I never would have been able to speak like that. I would have been too worried about what people thought of me. I just would have pretended that I didn't see that word. I would have just skipped over it. Um, anyway, a deeper knowing that transcends the, I'm going to say inner workings <laughs> of the smaller thinking mind. At the deep level of your intuitive senses, you have an access point to the genius of the collective, the energies of all thinkers and creators, all inventors and leaders, and all you need in order to leap into success are available to tune into. This is an act of listening intently. Past the busy mind, your genius awaits. Um, so really interesting. I went to look something up on Netflix last night, and I was looking up a movie, and Eat, Pray, Love popped up right at the top, and I haven't watched that since a long time. Um, I'm going to go to another part before I start rambling on. 
So I felt called to click on it because I haven't watched it in years. And, you know, it's about her exploring spirituality. Like she goes on a self-discovery spiritual journey. And I'm not very far into it yet, but one of the first um, interactions she has with a spiritual guru, she asks him for advice and he hands her... I'll watch it again so that I know what it actually is. But he hands her this drawing and he said it's symbolic of not listening to your head. Don't listen to your head. Don't listen to your mind. Listen to your heart. Lead with your heart. Lead with your heart and soul. Um, anyway, that's what I was hearing. I was hearing lead with your heart and soul, not with your mind, not with your ego, not with your fear. All right, so let's get, I'm going to get one of these sacred destiny ones. <laughs> Let's see. Let's cut the deck. We have release. Interesting. So maybe you're working on releasing things. Let's see what you need to hear, my friend. Let's see what you need to hear. We have taking risks. I like that for you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's this video on... Um, there's this video on Instagram that I keep seeing. I think it's a scene from a movie, and I think I shared it on my stories, but it's this woman pushing another woman off a cliff, and the caption is always like, this is how my therapist decided, or this is, my therapist told me to trust them, or this is what the spiritual journey is like. And sometimes when I see that video, <laughs> I think of me like shoving you guys off the cliff, like, just do it, <laughs> just jump in. And the video, I'm not sure what movie it's from, but it's this feminine going down like um, like rapids, whitewater rapids, but she's not in a boat. She gets pushed off the cliff by another feminine. Um, and at first she's struggling, like she's struggling to fight the current. She's flailing her arms. She's freaking out. She's panicking. And then she realizes that if she's just still... She just sails through that journey. So um, stop fighting it. Take that leap of faith. We have change on the bottom. I stopped shuffling there for a reason. So I'm going to take this card because I don't believe in accidents. I don't believe in accidents, yet I'm asking for a signier sign than that. <laughs> Taking risks. You know what else I see? There's something about seeing the bigger picture, seeing things from a higher perspective, because we have that bird there. And that can be very symbolic from seeing things from a higher perspective, which is what I was getting with the giraffe as well. I'm just going to hold it right there. The plateau is a large flat area of land that is significantly higher than the landscape around it. The sides, at least one or two, are sheer and steep. These formations are typically caused by the up upwelling of volcanic volcanic magma, te tectonic movement, or even erosion. Some indigenous groups call these tablelands tapu, 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 I don't know, which means house of the gods. When you stand at the edge of one of the sheer walls, you can feel that you are in the place of the gods. When you draw this card, it is time to step beyond your normal everyday life. Take a risk, face your fears, do things new in a new and even unorthodox way. Listen more to your inner voice than the opinion, your mind and your ego mind and the opinions of others. Sorry, I'm not meaning to yell at you. <laughs> um, rather than running from potential failure, embrace it. History has shown that those willing to face failure will often succeed in a massive way later. And if you think about it, anybody who has succeeded in life, they wouldn't be there if they didn't take that risk. Anybody, like anybody who's successful would not be here if they didn't put themselves out there and take that risk. Um, so remember that without taking that risk, you can't be that successful person. Who's stopping you? Your own fear. <laughs> you. <laughs> Change.
Dancing Clouds. It's on page nine. You know how I feel about the number nine. Evolution. Maybe you're changing into your highest self, the highest version of you. Throughout time, people have looked to the heavens for signs, and in the ever-changing movement of the clouds, they have seen shapes and forms that deem... Can I just... Can I just... Just hold on. If you... If you want to see the beauty of the universe and the beauty of Mother Nature and something that's, you know, naturally beautiful, look out, look up into the sky a couple times a day. Um, I've been, I've seen some really cool clouds um, along my journey at like really weird times. Um, you know, I can remember someone like, being in a situation where I felt like I wanted to progress towards something and the universe, my intuition was telling me, no, don't do it. It's not the right time. And I remember going outside and seeing a snail and it was like, oh, I really do have to take my time. I do have to trust my intuition. Um, there was once before I awakened, there was once where I asked the universe for a sign if I was on the right path, if I should be, you know, chasing my dream here. Um, no, I would have been a little awakened at the time. I was like baby awakened. I was like little baby awakened. <laughs> um, I went outside and I saw a check mark in the sky. I have a picture of it somewhere. It was so clear. It was just like, check, <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> um, anyway, I was looking at the sky last night. And it's almost like someone is up there with a brush, like brush strokes in the sky. So if you are missing beauty in your life or you need a reminder of just how magical this world is, look up into the sky at the art that is our clouds. Um, again, I am, I'm, it's upside down again. I'm such a hippie. I'm such a hippie. Um, clouds are shapeshifters. Their essence is the same, but they can change from mist to rain, to ice to snow to water. The transient nature of clouds lends the understanding that life is transitory and ever-changing. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to change directions. This is the time to put the needs and expectations of others aside. Yes! <laughs> So, you know, if you're someone, for example, being brutally honest with my people here, I woke up at age 35. I think I was 35 at the time. I can't even remember. Maybe I was 36. Um, and I realized my intuition was telling me this life that you've built, you're not happy in it. Um, actually, talking about eat, pray, love, I'm not giving anything away. This is in the very beginning of the movie. But she has this inner knowing that she's not happy and she's looking around her apartment and she's like, but this is what I wanted. This is what I manifested. I wanted to get married. I wanted the home and now I'm not happy. And she, again, I'm not trying to spoil the movie, but she cried on her bathroom floor. I think it was her bathroom for a sign. And she said, I've never prayed before, which is exactly where I was when I realized that I wasn't happy. I sat on my bathroom floor, didn't believe in anything, didn't know who I was talking to, but I didn't have anybody else to talk to. And I remember saying like, please help me. Like I have, I don't know what to do. I feel so lost. And in that movie, that's exactly what she does. And she says, please send me a sign. Tell me what to do. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Silence. She goes back to bed and she lays down and she's looking at her husband and he opens his eyes and he says to her a lot, like, I'm not going to say what he says, but he basically says, I'm not happy. I don't want to do the things that you're doing. And she didn't want to do the things that he was doing. It's okay to change the trajectory of your life. It's okay to realize that you're unhappy in your relationship and that you want better. It's okay to... Realize that you're unhappy in your marriage and that you want better. It's okay to realize that you're not happy in the job that, you know, you poured energy and money into going to school for. And now your soul is telling you you're supposed to be going somewhere different. And please, this card says it all. It's not time to be listening to other people's opinions about what they think is best for you because they don't know what's best for you. Only you know what's best for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyway, 
I can feel myself getting really intense when I channel. That was one of those moments. Like I was really, um, I was intense there for a minute. I'm, I'm not sorry. Um, anyway, this is the time to put the needs and expectations of others aside as you listen to the beat of your own drum. And what was I talking about the other day? The beat of your own drummer when that hermit card came out. I said it, following the beat of your own drum. And when you try and change your life, People will try and stop you. People people who know you and know a certain version of you will be threatened by the change. Anyway. <sighs> I'm laughing at myself. You don't need to follow tradition. Truth. Create your own traditions. You are free to express yourself and let your spirit fly. Be daring. Go beyond predictable behavior. Just because something has always been done a certain way doesn't mean that it needs to continue to be done in that way. You can't control the exact circumstances of your life, but you can control what meaning you give to them. Select meanings that empower you, for this is the time to be carefree, wild, and unpredictable. And I'm even seeing that image of the merry-go-round and Mary Poppins, where they all think they're just going to keep going around and around on this merry-go-round. And Mary Poppins, um, you know, uses her magic and those horses come off of that merry-go-round and, you know, become real. Ho they don't become real horses, but they start moving like real horses. They, you know, break away from that wheel. Um, anyway, this is also on page... Something that equaled 10, Wheel of Fortune energy. Um, it could have just been 10, but Wheel of Fortune energy. Anyway, I felt like I got really passionate about that message. So hopefully somebody needed to hear that specific message because, again, I'm just going to be completely vulnerable about my situation. Um, you know those tower moments that I talked about with my parents? I've talked about how... When I was 16, 222 on the timer, my parents separated and I saw a different side of my mother. And I feel like if she had kept going on that path, her life would have changed drastically. I probably wouldn't even be here doing this. I don't know. My life could be completely different. Everything happens in divine timing. But she let the opinions of others stop her like so many people do. Um, when I was doing personal readings, you know... The amount of times I heard, even when I was a photographer, I was, um, the amount of times I would hear from women that when they realized that they were unhappy in their marriage and that they wanted something better for themselves, how many of their friends told them, you're going to ruin your kids' lives. What are you doing? You're going to fuck up your life. Um, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Just because they can't imagine doing it doesn't mean that it's wrong for you. Again, you'd be like, it kind of shocked me. And when it happened to me, my friend did the same thing. What are you doing? You must be crazy. And if you don't have a backbone, you listen to the opinions of others, right? If you don't have confidence, if you don't trust your inner voice, when I say don't have the backbone, I'm talking about myself. So please don't take offense to that. I was talking about my own backbone. Um, I still don't have a backbone. I'm working on it. Um, but at the time, I didn't have an inner voice, so I listened to my friend. And then when things got really bad, I sat on my bathroom floor and said, if there's anybody out there, please help me. Um, if there's anybody up there, if there's anybody out there in the universe, if there's a higher power, because I didn't believe, um, I need help. Um, I had no, I had nobody else to turn to. Anyway, I don't know why I'm like, I don't know why I'm getting into this message. It's very, um, anyway, let's get one more card. <laughs> oh, we have success. And we've been talking about that black jaguar and black cat energy and things like that. So I feel... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that is beautiful. I already read you the card. I knew I had to get this deck. I knew it. I knew it. Hang on. 
I had to go pull myself together. <laughs> I just had to blow my nose because once I start crying, my nose will run until I blow it. Um, anyway, so I think that is beautiful that that card came out. Like I said, I was I was feeling the energy of that card. So I love that it showed its face in your reading. That's just magical. Um, no spirit. We don't need a sign of your sign. We don't need more confirmation. That was beautiful. And that's what I should have said when that when I found that card on my floor. I should have said thank you for the very clear sign. <laughs> I just opened up to it. That's magical. I just opened right up to that card. Success. I am going to read this to you because the synchronicities are just... Anyway. Tropical jungles are some of the richest and most successful habitats in our planet. They have incredibly incredible diversity, a multitude of plant varieties and animal inhabitants. They are dense with a life force that is rapidly growing and rapidly changing. The lusciousness of their vegetation is essential to the ecological health of the earth. In many ways, the su success of the planet depends on the rainforest. These areas are called the lungs of the planet. The plants absorb carbon dioxide, produce oxygen, and help reduce the impact of worldwide climate change. In addition, thousands of plants and animal species that may have medical properties have yet to be discovered. Satisfaction, content, it's on page 90. Satisfaction, contentment, and fulfillment are at hand. Success is waiting to expand in your life. Be ready to accept and embrace this success, for it might occur, occur rapidly. All is possible. The gates of triumph are waiting to open. Be, I just need to, I have a tear coming down my cheek. I just need to, I needed to wipe it away. Um, being in a state of gratitude for all the small successes in your life will give birth to larger ones. Have you started your gratitude journal? You don't even need a gratitude journal if you're in the practice of showing gratitude for everything. Like, you know, for having like encounters with animals, for seeing signs on the clock, just gratefulness for things in your everyday life, gratefulness for the people in your life. Um, I even write down things like I'm grateful for the ability that I can work out because I know that some people can't physically work out, you know? Um, so work on being gr grateful for everything that you have and more, the universe will supply you with more to be grateful for. Once they know you can be grateful for what they're giving you. Like I said, do you think my guides are going to send me as clear as a sign, clear as day sign again, anytime soon? Probably not because my first reaction was, but can you be a little clearer? <laughs> Your satisfaction will come in many forms and from many areas of life. Celebrate it all and breathe it all in, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. This is an excellent time to make commitments, sign contracts, and make deals. Good fortune will ensue. And I almost saw, it said make deals, but I almost thought that it said make amends, which is interesting because we have that mending card. But anyway... Um, so that is, those are your cards for today. Now let's get some, anim, some of these animal, um, animal cards I talked about. So I already read to you the dragonfly card. So let's see what else you need to hear. What advice do you need to hear? We have the hawk, remember? Thank you, Spirit, for the synchronicity. Please send more. I love them. <laughs> Fly above. Fly above and beyond your day-to-day -day thoughts to observe them from a bird's eye view. Quieting the mind and detaching from your thought patterns <laughs> puts you in a better position to take in messages from your spirit guides. That is beautiful because that's what we were getting in those other cards. Quiet the mind so that you can hear your guides, so that you can hear your higher self, so that you can hear God, whatever it is that you believe in. Let's go to another part. Ah! <laughs> that deck just flew out of my hands. It's very slippy. <laughs> um, I made eye contact with the hedgehog when I was waiting for that to restart. 
um, so I have to read it now. <laughs> this is a reminder that even if you feel that others do not understand you or get what you are doing, it is no excuse to curl up and hide. Sure, you may need a little space right now, but the world needs your gifts. You are more than worthy. It is very scary to put yourself out there spiritually. spiritually. It is. Um, you know, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I'm battling. Um, I feel like there's a friendship that's trying to leave my life right now. And I don't know what to do. Not that I'm like, it's not like you can answer me and help me, but... I said it to my partner today. I feel like I'm getting, I have this friendship where I feel like I'm being tested. I feel like I'm having these small tests or these small moments where the universe is telling me you're not aligning with this energy anymore. You're not aligning with this person. Um, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I've been wondering, like, this is, you know, not a spiritual person. I have to kind of water myself down. Um, anyway, it's, it's incredibly hard if you're not openly spiritual, especially if everyone around you has always known. Like this is kind of the same energy. It's like everyone knows a certain version of you and when you start acting differently and you start awakening and you start being different um it can be hard for other people to understand anyway my heart goes out to you you have a community here who loves you and accepts you um we get you here we get you um i know that you guys get me i get you All right, I made eye contact with the bottom, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I'm just going to see what comes out. Like the whole, I'm going to shuffle the whole deck. Okay. We have the panda. We had the panda yet. Was it the panda yesterday? This is beautiful. I like, I'm tempted to just, I'm going to read all the cards, but like, I just heard spirits say, these are the only two you need. Um, I haven't read these yet, by the way. Panda. Panda, the panda's still here from the other day. Um, your space is sacred. Guests who overstay their welcome impact your aura, and you have every right to stand your ground. Your needs are important. You must nurture your soul with the same gentle love and support you offer to others. Hang on. Talk about a trigger. I was just, remember I said, I don't know why I'm telling you about my friend. That really um, resonated with me. Your space is sacred. Guests who overstay their welcome impact your aura. And I was just talking about um, watering myself down. Um, anyway, that's for you too. But you can see like how I resonated with that after telling you about my friend. And then we have self-love, the peacock. You will find great power in focusing on the positive aspects of yourself. That which makes you indefinably unique and beautiful. There are deep wells of untapped inner power in letting go of negative self-talk. <sighs> Decisive action. You are being told it's time to get moving. Set your intentions and take actions towards making your dream a reality. You have a door in front of you. Trust your instincts. I'm using paper towel <laughs> to wipe my nose. So we have the antelope, the peacock, and the panda. Beautiful. And now let's see what else came out. They all flew out face down, so I don't even know. We have cycle. Oh my goodness. A nine-month cycle is in play. Your current project will take nine months to mature and benefit you. Commit fully to it. You have the strength and stamina you need as long as you move forward and not backwards. So this is telling me that, you know, you could be in a nine month cycle with a situation right now that's coming to an end. Like I'm telling you, if you've been in separation 
or silence with someone for nine months. That could be this. Um, the other thing I'm hearing is whatever this endeavor that you're planning on going after, Spirit's saying it's only going to take nine months for it to start showing you um, abundance. Um, within nine months, you'll see a change. You'll see a shift is what I'm hearing. We have passion. This dragon is dragon. This dragon is a reminder of your strong will and fiery personality. It is also a symbol of passion and fire. You are being asked to practice self-control and be cautious so that your passion does not lead you into trouble. Mystery, the bobcat. The bobcat teaches you that there is true power and strength in silence and patience. In order to get what you want, you must be willing to plan, adapt, and above all, have the patience the patience to see your dreams manifest. High priestess energy is what I'm hearing. Um, I was also getting, that's weird. I was hearing five of pentacles. Interesting. Fear of rejection, maybe? We have crow transition. Which part of your life is or maybe going through a transition. Maybe you are changing relationships, careers, or cities. Whatever it is, the crow is signaling that you are ready to make the change. So while I was reading this, I felt called to mention something. We also have snake. Beautiful. See how many came out for you? Transformation. You will be shedding an old skin and emotions and transforming them into something bigger and better. Change is in the wind. And if and you are at the center of it all as the catalyst to smooth the process, make sure that your intentions are clear and that you move forward with hope. Anyway, I was just going to say something. Um, I have no idea why this is relevant, but I'm being called to mention it. Um, when I started putting energy towards this and I was do still doing my other job, I realized very quickly that I was much happier doing this than my photography job. Um, this filled my soul up. This fulfilled me spiritually. And then I found myself struggling with my day job, like struggling to want to do the work, struggling to want to go shoot the session, um, struggling to want to edit the session. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention is I feel like that's part of what's happening to me with my friendships is that as I elevate and I'm at a higher vibration and I make spiritual friends that get, you know, reciprocate time and energy and positive energy and spiritual energy, I'm finding that like my old job, the people that I was aligned with before, I don't feel aligned with them anymore, you know? Um, and that's tough. That's tough. Anyway, I don't know why I'm bringing that up, but I felt the need to mention it. So, my friends, let's end with... Let's end with these ones. I was going to get you the trash ones, the trash animals, but I used them for a pick-a-card, and they're all the way across the room. Um, let's see what wants to come out. I choose a bright future now. Only three came up. The moment I start to change, the moment I am willing to bring good into my life, the universe responds in kind. Isn't that interesting? There's a lot about change in this reading. Oh, there was four. The moment I am willing to change, it is amazing how the universe brings me what I need. That's a different card. I trust myself and the process of life. The moment I say positive affirmations, I step out of the victim role. I am no longer helpless. I acknowledge my own power. I am totally in charge of my life now. I like that. I'm going to go to the next part. I release all blame and turn within to seek the truth. I affirm that I am willing to release the causes and patterns in my consciousness that are creating any negative conditions in my life. And Spirit told me just to get another one. 
we have two. Everything I do is a choice, so I am in control of my reality. The thoughts I choose to believe right now, that's not an affirmation. The thoughts I choose to believe right now are forming my experiences. I now listen to what I say and do not say anything that I do not want to become true for me. I accept that I cannot learn from other I cannot learn other people's lessons for them. They must do the work themselves and they will do it when they are ready. That's like the hardest lesson to learn. No, there's a bunch of hard lessons. I appreciate others for who they are. And what's on the bottom here? I am in harmony with all that surrounds me. I am at peace. I affirm only the good in life. So my friends, I'm going to leave it here. I'm sending you lots of love and light. Thank you for being, you know, a space for me where I can be vulnerable as well. I love you all. I love all of your comments. Um, you know, it's I've been going almost two weeks doing a soul tribe reading every day, which is not what I intended to do. But I really do enjoy it. And like, I, like I've told my friends here, when I don't do a soul tribe reading, I truly feel like something is missing from my day. So if you, you know, I hope you know how important your presence is and how special you are. And I'm sending you lots of love and light and I will talk to you tomorrow, my friend. Bye.